Anyway, technically speaking, the separation period is a time where we dominate the archangel. Give Eve back to God. Don't take her for ourselves. She's not our little plaything. She is not the thing that we've been imagining. We're going to do this and that and all of this. Our fantasies are going to come true through her. And No, that's not who she is. She is not this thing that you know Satan one day promised you you would be able to have with a woman she's not that thing you're not supposed to grab her and push her into that box she's not supposed to be that she is supposed to be God's daughter in your mind so you're supposed to be during during the separation period you're supposed to be fighting that impulse of trying to massage her into that little box now my my buddy said something very interesting. He said, you know, how can a woman, how can women, the women's movement, you know, um, especially the most complaining, feminazi type of woman, how can they say that men in the unification movement treat their women like property if these men are being encouraged to push their wife towards God? So, especially, you know, at the end of the separation period, when you, in your mind, have pushed your own mind to a position where your spouse belongs to God, then when you receive her at the end of the separation period, this is a totally different emotional position from which to be receiving your spouse. And there's victory in that. Can you imagine um, knowing that you are receiving God's daughter during a three-day ceremony as opposed to not really thinking in that way? I mean, just going through the actions and not really having emotional content? You should feel totally loved by God. If you really thought and felt that she was his daughter and you're doing this Act, you're going through this three day ceremony with her because he said so there is no basis for you to to um, feel lack of love common base with the archangel there is just no way so during this separation period, and we still, after the 21st, are still in this separation period. And um, so some spiritual things have been going on, have been, have been happening. And I'd like to tell you about that. Well, for me, um, after, the, after the blessing ceremony, um, yeah, everything was going fine. Uh, you know, we started to see all this 23, as I was telling you about. And I did that video, and we went to two Sunday sermons and everything. But while this was happening, um, you know, I decided, um, you know, one day, uh, my wife, you know, she called me in the bedroom. We were just going to um, maybe have... <clears throat> We we're going to have a sexual relationship. But then she said, you know, I feel distant from you. And I'm like, why? Why do you feel distant from me? She said, well, you've been busy all day. So we wound up talking and um, didn't do anything physical that night. And, um, you know, I didn't want to because, you know, I'm not trying to make my wife feel like, you know, uh, we don't have a complete relationship and all this kind of stuff. Like I don't, you know, have an internal relationship with her, you know, and, and I don't feel like having an external relationship with her if we don't have any internal relationship. So we didn't do anything. And, um, you know, it was, it was a little bit frustrating, but it was understandable and no big deal. 
Then a few days later, I was thinking, I should try what Hyungjin and him talked about. I should try being a vessel for um, for God to make love to my wife. So I thought, you know, she really deserves it. And I recalled a friend of mine who will remain nameless. Uh, but a friend of mine had trouble back in the early days of his blessing. And he told me about a similar thing that he did. Because his wife thought that he was going to leave her. Because her dad left uh, when she was younger. And she just couldn't trust. So she kept treating him, my friend, like he was just going to leave her any day. You know, like there was no warmth because she thinks he's going to hurt her and, and leave her. You know, so, um, you know, he, he felt that she really needed stability and a lot of love. And he wasn't able to give it to her because nothing he did was trusted anyway. She, she would be like, yeah, right, you're trying to just get my trust so that you can hurt me deeper you know and so anyway with that situation being the way that it was he had this prayer where he asked Jesus and uh, Hong Jinim to come into his body come into his bedroom and um, make love to his wife so that's what he did and by the end of that lovemaking, you know, his wife was in tears. She felt something very deep. And um, she felt loved and embraced. So, you know, I had already had this um, notion because my friend had shared this years ago, you know. And he shared how this was a breakthrough for him. So when Hyung Jin started talking about this, it wasn't foreign to me. But I realized it was very foreign. It's very foreign to a lot of people in our church. This idea that, you know, as a man, I'm going to take my ego out of the way. You know, like I don't get to be the guy touching my wife. That's some other entity, even God. Okay? So this is... You know, the type of thinking that we inherit from the ignorance of the archangel. Why? Because, and I'll explain in a second, the archangel did not see from a higher point of view um, the purpose of creation of Adam and Eve. And he thought from a low dimensional point of view, he thought, you know, Eve is going to go to that guy, so that's the end of it. He gets everything. It's everything. This was not God's plan, but the archangel couldn't see that. So he thought he was losing something, okay? Just like any ch jealous husband. If, if, if you think that some other, somebody's going to you know, touch your wife, you think something is being removed from you. Even if it's God, even if it's a uh, father, because you don't understand higher dimensional um, dynamics. And, and here's, what, here's what the deal is. Um, God wanted to make love to Eve. God wanted to raise up Adam. And Adam was going to be the body of God. And God was going to make love to Eve. Alright? Through Adam. Now, every young man in Adam's bloodline was going to have the same experience of going back to the first love, back to that place where they get to, in a sense, be God. There is no ego here. And I remind you last video I told you I had this realization about the holy handkerchiefs. There's no, there's no names on the holy handkerchiefs. And I believe that that's like that for a reason. We are supposed to transcend our ego. We are supposed to enter a poetic place where there is no Jamal, okay? There is no fill in the male name. He's not there. 
every man is Adam. Now, look, if you're saying you've never heard anything like this, it's because of the low level of awareness that we have stayed on in this church, okay? You and I are supposed to fulfill what's said in the Bible that in that day, as Jesus is in the Father, we are in Jesus. He in the Father, we in Him. In other words, we are one, okay? We are vibrationally one, you know, like you have two tuning forks and they're vibrating, okay, at the same frequency. You slap one, it starts vibrating, and then through the medium of the air, they both start vibrating because they're, uh, they're, they, they have the same resonant frequency. Well, we're supposed to drop ego and be the original dream, okay? And when we get to that place, it is as if God is making love to his bride. Do you understand? So, that is an immensely intimate place to be at with God. And in that place, that place existed outside of time and space. It even exists outside of the spirit world. It's directly in the realm of heart. It's directly in the heart of God is directly in the heart of God and we're talking about touching a very intimate space with God but in order to get there since there is no time and space in God there can be no name there is no you you're the one who has to shed your name okay your wife has to stop being who whatever her name is you have to stop being whatever and you have to be so mature and so filled with the fundamental elements of masculinity and femininity and knowledge of God that you willingly go to that place where there's just God, Adam, and Eve. We all become Adam. We all become Eve. And we all get to experience exclusivity um, with God by keeping our, our, our chastity, um, fidelity with our spouse here on earth. We all get to experience uniqueness, okay? And we all have a unique spouse, so we all get to experience uniqueness. But this is something that we all universally would experience. So there's no need for a name if we're all experiencing the same thing. So dropping ego is the issue of the separation period. And it's why there's no names on the holy handkerchief. And some of us don't want to drop our ego. We want our ego to touch our wife. We want our ego to own our wife. And our wife at some point doesn't like to be in bondage like this. Okay? So, you know, anyway. Theoretically, I understand now what I've been going through in the past couple of weeks. So what happened is, you know, I went to my wife. And I said, I'm going to let God make love to my wife. And I determined to, you know, just let God touch her and, and, and everything. Okay, let God touch her. Let God kiss her. Let God pay attention to her. Let God pay attention to different parts of her, her, her face, her body, um, and just let God, um, you know, really appreciate what he created, okay? Because um, I didn't create my wife, okay? God did. And my wife is a creation of God, okay? And daughter of God and wife of God and all those things were rolled into one. And the point is I'm not the origin, okay? So I'm like, you know... I'm going to have this mystical feeling and I'm going to let God be here and I'm going to appreciate her as if I was God the, God the creator appreciating, you know, like something that had been in the oven baking. So you're kind of marveling at something you've been, that, that's been freshly out of the oven. You're like, wow, I'm a good cook, right? So I'm going to let God feel that kind of appreciation for what he had baked up my wife right so 
she started going higher and higher and by higher and higher I mean the intensity for her is growing and you know at the peak you know she was just really at a, at a, at a, at a place that, that, that we rarely get to um, and you know she was saying stop because it was just so so overwhelming and um, that's when usually you know a, a guy uh, you know could stop or you know maybe try to focus on finishing you know on his side you know because we're talking about orgasm okay we're talking about when being at the top okay she was at the top and uh, at that climax and so then father says many times when he's talking about absolute sex then when you when 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 the wife says you know welcome and and, and come in um, you know that's when you as brother you go in after you do your part you know and father would say start at the lips and then go to the breast and work your way down and we would and people would be giggling right and father would be like looking at looking in the audience like why are you laughing this is very serious this is very serious and um, you know so I I didn't do all the things that father said to do because I remembered him saying that I was just trying to get my ego out of the way and let God make love to my wife but I wound up doing all the things that father was talking about <laughs> which is so funny because no it's not funny it's just so interesting that I noticed as I reflected on that evening that night that I wound up doing everything that father used to tell us to do do anyway only I did it without thinking the only thing I thought in terms of conscious thinking is get out of the way and let God be there okay so so she had a great time and I had a great time and uh, you know if this past Sunday ser service I went and I, I told young to them because he was talking about being the best man and you know and I was like yeah well I understand what that is because you don't you don't go in and eat the fruit for yourself if you're trying to let God be with your wife right um, you're not there eating the fruit for yourself you're there serving God and you're there serving your wife. You you're really serving your wife because you want her to have. You don't want your immaturity and your ego to be the reason why she doesn't get what Eve deserves. You know what I'm saying? So you're trying to get your ego and your immaturity out of the way, and you're asking God to give her a more full experience than even you understand. Right? Does that make sense? So. Um, um, that's all you're doing. You know you're immature. You know your ego's a problem. So you, you know your wife has to s sort of not get what she should get because of your immaturity. So consciously you set it aside and you say, God, please make love to my wife through uh, through through me, right? So that she can have potentially like like more. And you can't own it because you actually immature you actually well whatever but anyway so that's between God and his bride Eve you know and uh, my wife sort of stops being herself too to, to be honest with you she actually stops being um, you know who she is and in that moment she bec just becomes Eve she just gets to enjoy being Eve and we know from our father's um, teaching, God want, made Adam so that he could get his hands on Eve. So she, she just gets to be that, you know? And that is also one dream. That is one place. So the wife shouldn't be ego tripping over that either. Okay? So I go to Sunday service after having this um, experience and I go to uh, Hyung Jin Im and I tell him I know exactly what you're talking about this best man experience you know you get out of the way and you let you let the bride and the, groom, and, the, and the groom have their time and then you can feast afterwards right so feast afterwards is like you know when I get to when I get invited to have climax after um, 
my wife is fully satisfied after her meeting with God, you know. Um, so, you know, in the previous sermon, Huntington said, you send your wife to God and he, he sends her down in oil. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm totally getting that after, after this past week. So, these two sermons I've been actually experiencing. So, after the last Sunday sermon, after the sermon that was on, what was it, the, uh, the 6th, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. The 3rd, the 3rd. After the sermon that was on the 3rd, um, we were talking, uh, at lunch, I mean, Hyung Jin Im and Cook Jin Im and, and like 30, 40 brothers and sisters, we were talking about this, send your wife up and stuff. And you know, honestly speaking, some, some people have ego issues, but even myself, I had this experience. So Hyung Jin Im, um, he, he's, he's telling me, if father said, send your wife to his room, would you be able to do it? And the truth is, that made me uh, struggle because you know um, I know we're recreating um, the blessing and thoughts have been going through my mind about how much of the foundation has been perturbed by the the schism in the church you know how much is lost how much is still intact how much must be recreated um, uh, and if, if if indemnity is required then I recall father saying indemnity is over but you know when Hyung Jin asked me this question I didn't even want to face it I could just feel my own dismissive nature you know just going yeah I don't have to deal with that okay but then something grabs my face like here and, and here and it just you know squeezed in like that like like a spiritual pressure and it wouldn't release until I was looking at Hyung Jin in his face and when I did he asked me this question like like what would you do if father said said send your wife to his room and then I realized that was the exact same space indemnity space that Joseph was in okay Joseph had to, to have this wife who who was impregnated by somebody else right that was Joseph's situation okay and um, you know father has said that this is the indemnity this is what the archangel has to go through because he took so he has to let go. He has to let 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 uh, Eve go back to God. Okay, there's just no way around this. So ever since that moment, I just felt like I cannot touch my wife. Uh, I just felt like she's better than me. She's in a more pure place than me. And I can't explain this feeling. I didn't know where it was coming from. But I couldn't touch her. I couldn't, uh, you know, uh, I, I certainly couldn't have sex with her. I could touch her in a, you know, normal holding hands way and stuff like that. But, you know, like sex and kissing, and no, I, I couldn't do that. And um, I couldn't explain it. I didn't understand it. It was a spiritual pressure. And I had to start to face something, and I didn't want to. It was like when I didn't want to face Hyung Jin Im's question. And this spiritual pressure came on, making me deal with this question. And I finally dealt in, in my home with this question, and I started to tell my wife about it. And as we talked about it, I felt... All the people who helped Father do those six Marys, um, you know, uh, conditions, 
and um, you know all these people who have to do this um, less than ideal uh, condition to restore uh, to restore the um, absolute sex I felt them one night in my bedroom with my wife and we were talking about these things and I just felt that you know if if somebody gave up their purity um, to God to the Messiah for the sake of the world if someone had to um, relinquish their wife like a Joseph these types of things are deeply deeply require deep deep respect and I don't mean respect like oh you did it for us kind of thing I mean respect like what a horrible thing to have to go through when you realize what you did to God we are going through the feelings of the archangel that he should have let go that he had no right and no claim on that woman okay and he had to let her go this is what Joseph went through and if you can go through that Satan has a base to respect you and not chastise you and stay the hell away from you and out of your mind as a husband and that's why the separation period is a gift because it's way lesser indemnity than six Mary's providence and that's what I felt like all those uh, couples that were uh, there in, 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 in my bedroom the night my wife and I were talking about this distance that I felt I felt like all those couples involved in those uh, six Marys types of providences Joseph and all those people were sitting there tapping their toes looking at me like you you're weak you're you're weak you have no idea what kind of sacrifice for the sake of the world other people had to go through you know and I could feel their scars I could, I could feel it I mean you're not gonna do something like that and like just bounce back it's a real offering you know it's not it's not even normal it's an abnormal thing to do for the sake of others for the sake of creating a foundation you know so I felt them going if you can't do it at least appreciate the fact that father created three-day ceremony so that you don't have to do it so I had this feeling that if I don't accept full appreciation for the three-day ceremony and if I don't accept this little condition of pushing my wife to God and not taking her for myself and killing my ego my male ego okay if I don't take this lesser indemnity okay then man what an ungrateful bastard I am okay so this is what I learned um, it, wrestling with the spirit world this week okay I felt like every couple that was involved in that six Mary's providence and even Joseph and all those types of figures they were in my bedroom um, this week and the big message there was <laughs> you do not want to hold on to the archangel self-centered ego um, because somebody had to pay dearly to prove that they could go against that nature and you just can't you know in some kind of flippant nonchalant way blow this off okay you can't and call yourself a blessed couple no no you can't so the blessing was on the 21st 
and we're still in that 40 day separation period and I feel like you know maybe even in a worldwide way th this topic that Hyunjin is bringing up we're all going through something I know couples that are going through it I know blessed husbands who are just they still the, the personal offense feeling of having to send your wife to somebody else I mean just really that is so what's the word salient you know I, just meditate on that for a little while and that's all I did this week just lesser indemnity brothers and sisters is to just receive the reality of it okay just receive that people, for our sakes, went through these types of courses, okay, to purify. They bring us a, a bridge back to absolute sex, okay? And we receive a minimum condition, okay, of doing the separation period and a three-day ceremony, okay, w which is really all about restoring the archangel, okay? And I said it before, separation, you have to push Eve towards God. And three-day ceremony, you have to, you then receive her. So it should dissolve your lack of love. The more you push her to God, the more glorious she seems like in your mind. The more holy she seems. And that's another thing that's been going on. Since I haven't been touching my wife, <laughs> I'm actually loving it. Because the more we stay away from each other, the more... Her body is like, in my spiritual eye, she looks like, and this is no lie, she looks like a gold statue. I'm dead serious. My wife looks like a gold statue. And I was telling one of my friends tonight, I'm like, actually, it's, it started out as some kind of a, a suffering, okay? Like suffering, like I missed her. But, you know, after... Uh, you know, six or seven days or more it's been. Um, actually, I like it. And the reason why I like it is because the holier she becomes at the end of this separation, I mean, I know that there's going to be an emotional, physiological locking in of the reality that she is a tremendously precious gift and uh, you know my buddy said like this what woman could feel used like property after the husband and wife went through this type of process especially after he successfully relinquished her I mean there's no complaining fallen Eve gonna tell, tell that husband you treat me like property you know it's just not gonna happen because he already set the condition of not not grabbing at her, okay? But sending her to God. Seeing her as of God and making it real. Setting conditions to make it real. And that's what this separation period is about. So brothers and sisters, look. If you didn't ever want to deal with this content, I would just basically say then you still kept the archangel in your heart and he's probably done things in your life already that you don't like okay so look back on your life look at some things that you didn't like that were happening and blame blame it on the archangel still being there and so look this is lesser indemnity Actually, just sitting and meditating as men on this idea of sending your wife to, to another guy, to God, right? <laughs> Believe me, bro, that's lesser indemnity. <laughs> when you compare it to having to do the 40-day separation over again, just reflecting and appreciating, lesser indemnity. When you consider what Joseph had to go through, okay? having a wife impregnated by somebody else, okay, <laughs> then meditating on this idea is lesser indemnity. And um, when you think about six marriage types of events, can you imagine being married to one of these women that went through that before she met you? 
okay? And then she's going to always remember the Messiah in her mind, okay? And that this actually happened for her physically. You're going to be chopped liver after that, okay? So, this is lesser indemnity. And, um, anyway, this is the ninth, and we have 20, was it, I think, 21 more days, uh, till uh, the end of the 40 day period so listen thank you very much uh, God loves you and uh, I don't know if I'll do another video like this uh, but I'm doing it because I'm, I'm feeling pushed to do it and uh, and uh, thank you very much